hello America, this is Dave the Bald Guy, putting the bald guy into baldguylimo.com. Also, putting the bald guy into nwsurvivalexpo.com. It doesn't really ring the same bell, but you get the idea. So, very recently, we lost power here in our home for eight nights. You remember not that long ago, there was that big winter storm that hit Texas, and uh, you found out how crappy the Texas power grid was. It's still the butt of everyone's jokes as I record this. Um, well, before it went down into Texas, a piece of it started up here in the northern part of the country and went down. It got me, it got some friends of mine up in Seattle, it got some friends of mine down in California, and so on and so forth, they went, and it went down. And, um, I mean, seriously, the power was out for eight nights. It, it gets cold, <laughs> it gets really boring after a while, um, especially with a family that's used to having Wi-Fi and, and uh, you know, things that are run by electricity. So I learned a few things. I learned uh, some of the things I did that worked. I learned uh, some of the things that I didn't do that I, I now realize I do need to do. So this was a learning experience that I'm taking, taking away from this. First of all, I was really smart at the uh, end of the summer. I put our generator that we use for camping, I put it right outside this very window right behind me. And I said, well, I'm going to keep it here in case the power goes out. Well, sure enough, we used it. Um, one of the main problems was my wife sleeps with a CPAP machine or else she stops breathing while she's, uh, she's, uh, sleeping. And, you know, you can't have that. I mean, sleep apnea is a potentially fatal disorder. So we had to run the generator all night because we hadn't purchased yet a solar battery generator. And we have since purchased one. Ironically enough, we ordered it. And then it showed up the day the power came back on. <laughs> so we only used it to test it. We haven't actually used it uh, while camping or in a grid down situation here at the house. So I'm pretty uh, confident it'll work just fine. Uh, we did test it one night. My wife slept for nine hours and it still had a 55% charge on it. So I'm pretty confident that it would actually work. Um, I'm going to pick up the solar panel for it later, uh, at a later time. Um, right now we can just sort of keep it charged, plugging it into our wall here or um, with our generator. So be that as it may, I'm sure our neighbors appreciated the, uh, the generator running all night, but man... I, I was spending about 20 bucks in gas every day and a half or so just to keep that going. And the other thing was, not just the gas, it was everybody racing to the gas station to fill up their, you know, their gas cans because they're running their generator. And it was on a couple of occasions I spent 30 minutes in line to fill up my gas tank on the van, as well as the gas cans. So I learned very quickly that I need to buy more gas cans and I need to keep more fuel handy. So from this point forward, uh, I'm going to end up getting uh, about 40 gallons worth of gas cans and just keeping them handy, filled with fuel at any given time. Now, gasoline, you can only keep stored for roughly six months or so. So what I plan to do is every 90 days just empty it into the van's gas tank or the motorhome depending on variables. And uh, at that point I can just go to the gas station and fill them up and that way we can cycle it through and you don't have to worry about all those chemicals in the, uh, in the gasoline starting to separate, which is what will happen. But, uh, you know, regardless of that, gasoline turns out to be the lifeblood of the apocalypse. If toilet paper is the currency of the apocalypse, gasoline is the lifeblood. I always thought to myself, I should keep more gasoline handy and just never kind of got around to it. Other things sort of kind of came first. But uh, now that I know, we're definitely going to keep at least 40 gallons of gasoline. Now that I don't have to run a generator all night because we do have that electric battery, I'm not going to go through as much gasoline 
as I did in this last one. So I learned, I adapted, which was uh, an excellent, excellent uh, thing to do. Now, with that said, the snow and ice didn't just hurt the power grid and the power around here. Um, <laughs> we had a problem with our cell service. See, there's one tower in the general vicinity that actually our cell company uses for the people in this area. All right? The snow and ice pretty much destroyed it. <laughs> to my knowledge, it's still down. Here it is almost a month later. It actually still isn't working. I Years ago, I used to work for Verizon Wireless in a call center, and I didn't realize how much technology has changed. My wife calls up our, our service, which is Cricket, and said, hey, we don't have any cell service. And the lady who we're talking to, who's in India, by the way, says, well, I'm going to try and manually change your cell phone to connect to a different tower. This may or may not work. There's a 50-50 chance. I just kind of rolled my eyes, didn't think anything of it. Sure enough, it actually worked. She actually was able to change our cell phones from connecting to the broken tower to connecting to a different tower, which was actually technically roaming, but we were able to get a connection. But during those first few days with no cell, seriously, uh, you don't realize with a smartphone, you can get on various news outlets and see what's going on in the world. You don't have power, you can't run your television, you don't have internet, and you don't have your smartphone. It's like Little House on the Prairie in here, but we did have running water, uh, and we did have uh, uh, a toilet indoors. We didn't have to go poop out in the yard. <laughs> Maybe next time. Seriously, though, after a while, you're kind of like, wow, what's going on in the world? Because you just sort of feel this seclusion. You, you can't get on your phone to find out what's happening. You can't do anything. If we got in the car and drove like four minutes down the road, man... Our phones lit up, we connected to a tower, and we could communicate that way. We could tell the world we're still alive. But at home, we just couldn't. So we found that we we left home to find, go to the mall or places that was actually warm. Um, also, uh, where we could connect online as well. So we'd find places just to go. You know, just go to the mall. Uh, with COVID, everything's closed. And we can't go to the movies. It's all closed. So... Uh, <laughs> Be that as it may, um, we ended up getting, after day four, we ended up getting the cell phones working again. That was actually almost a morale booster, to be honest with you, because we were able to uh, we were able to actually get a little bit of normalcy, with even if it's just our phones. Um, with the generator working, we, we literally ran an extension cord under the front door, which is just over to my right, uh, ran an extension cord under it, and we were able to hook up a... Um, a little, uh, little electrical heater, which was able to give us a little heat in this living room. Um, after a while, I got kind of adventurous. I actually purchased a TV um, a couple months ago, and I haven't put it in the RV yet. It's the TV that's going to go in the RV because it has a DVD player built right into it. And I'm like, oh, this will save us so much time. Um, so when we're at a camp campground, we can go to a red box or just bring DVDs or whatever, and we can actually watch something. So... I just haven't put it in my RV yet because it's been pretty cold outside and it's an LCD screen and you know, I don't want it to get damaged in the below freezing uh, weather. So I just sort of just kept it here. It's actually in the corner. I'm looking at it right now. So I actually hooked that up into the system and we were able to watch at least some movies for a couple of nights. Um, that was kind of neat. Uh, that was nice. Another sense of normalcy. Um, so we had the heater going, and then we had the TV going, and a light. <laughs> uh, one thing on my podcast, and I interviewed a survivalist named Ron Foster. He said, hey, man, always have something to do, like a deck of cards or something. And, you know, that is absolutely true. Uh, our family likes to play Uno. Uh, and after a while, we're all kind of staring at each other with no internet or or any video games we could play. And so uh, we just sat down. We played Uno for 
hours. Uno is normally a game we play that almost causes divorce in my family. I mean, it gets rough. I mean, it's full contact extreme Uno. And honestly, it, it can get dirty. Um, so it was, it, we were allowed to, able to pass the time a bit with that. Um, one thing I was surprised about was how much hot water our hot water heater would keep. Uh, we didn't really get a chance to grab a shower um, because I didn't want to use too much hot water. We had to wash dishes by hand and such. Um, I did bring the air fryer from the kitchen and make some tater tots one night. Brought it over to the extension cord. Uh, that was kind of fun. Uh, but the hot water heater was, uh, was kind of neat because we were able to wash our hands. Like I said, the running water was working, so we were able to use the bathroom. Uh, after a few days, uh, we were, it was getting really mind-numbing. Uh, just sitting here, it's cold. We don't have a wood stove in the house. Now we're kind of talking about putting one in. But after a few days, we learned that Oregon City High School was opening up for people to come in, get a shower, pick up some bottled water, maybe some blankets and some candles and such. Uh, I had a fair amount of flashlights, but I did pick one up and a couple of things of bottled water and such, such as that. Um, we were, I was able to take a shower, which was actually really nice. Um, and because of COVID, you, they literally had three showers because they couldn't let you like all just gather into one shower all the men in one room and all the women in another room because of covid you could you know you could catch covid from somebody so they didn't want to deal with that so they just had three showers you're in there you've got 10 minutes 15 minutes or whatever and i take four minute showers anyway i don't have to lather rinse and repeat so my showers were pretty uh was pretty slick but it was really nice to be able to get a hot shower after a while um i missed my shower head the one there actually as you slowly turn it on, it literally, where I was standing, it just came and squirted me in the face like a, like a Three Stooges movie. I'm like, oh, ah, ah. It was really, it was really kind of crazy. Um, so I ended up moving over to the other shower, but that's neither here nor there. Um, what else was there? The, uh, by the time day eight rolled around, my wife kind of wanted a little bit of normalcy in her life. So she packed the kids up and went to her sister's house up in Vancouver, Washington. This is where we bugged out to a few months back when the forest fires came. When the wildfires came, we went and evac the area and went to spend the night at, at uh, the sister's. And the ironic thing is, is that's the day the, the battery came. And um, the other thing was uh, literally a few hours after that, the power came back on. So... She spent a couple nights at her uh, sister's house and had some fun time with her sister there. And so uh, that was kind of neat. And then I'm, I was here by myself for like, you know, a couple days and it was really strange and lonely. Anyway, be that as it may, uh, the things I really took away from this was um, you can never have enough extension cords. You can never have enough flashlights. Keep plenty of gasoline handy and have a deck of playing cards or something to do for people. Because I'll tell you, those nights get pretty long and you're all staring at each other going, man, is it time to go to bed yet? Can I go? What do you mean it's only 7 p.m.? Oh, jeez, it's brutal. That's really what was really had happened. And then uh, after a couple of days, that storm hit uh, Texas and... You know, and people died over there because their power grid is just, you know, useless. Useless. Say what you want about Oregon. Our power grid didn't die. We had uh, a lot of branches that the trees fell. We have a real tall cherry blossom tree outside, out, right out front of our house. And this thing, there was so much ice on it and snow. It All the branches, all the branches were touching the street. And I'm just sitting here freaking out thinking, oh, that's great. I'm going to end up losing this damn tree. Actually, it turned out pretty good because uh, the ice and snow came. And then two days later, it was all thawed out. I mean, the, the sun came out. It was 47, 48, 49 degrees outside during the day. And pretty nice weather. Pretty, pretty good. You go down to Texas and people were dying. It was freezing. But it's really strange. You had all this ice and snow and below freezing. And like two days later, it's like 50 degrees. That's insane, man. 
That's totally insane. Anyway, the tree ended up surviving. One branch got cracked. We just took it down. And um, but a lot of a lot of tall trees in this neighborhood. I mean, just a lot of tall trees and a lot of branches came down on people's houses. One um, went right through someone's carport. Fortunately, the car wasn't there, but it went right through it. It destroyed the whole thing. Uh, it was something else. That was something else. But uh, anyway, that's what I learned. So I thought I'd share that with you. Gasoline. Gasoline is the lifeblood of the apocalypse. You're going to need to have gasoline. Because let me tell you, when that electricity stops, ain't no electric pumps working. No electric pumps. You're going to have to have gasoline handy and have plenty of it. And you got to rotate it out every nine, every three months, every three to six months. So I'll just do mine every 90 days because that's easy to remember. But gasoline, gasoline, gasoline. You're not going anywhere without gasoline, are you? You, you got to evac out of your area. You got to have gasoline in that car. So keep as much gasoline as you can uh, on your property and uh, cycle it out every, uh, every few months. That's my greatest advice to you. That's my greatest thing that I learned. Uh, we had plenty of food here. Fortunately, it was winter, and I, I put it in a cooler and just threw it outside. I mean, it got to be 47 degrees outside during the day, but at night it's 33, 34, and that's plenty cold to keep the, keep the food good. Um, my wife and I signed up for this thing called HelloFresh a number of months ago, and we didn't keep with it very long. But they would ship the food with these... Uh, frozen packs and I thought well you know that this might be useful someday and it turns out it was because I just stuck that in the cooler with the food kept it nice I didn't have any food I had to throw out at all not at all um, all the food was uh, fine some of it was uh, you know I defrosted so I had, once the power came back on I had to cook it and just be done with that so I you know I cooked it and seal mealed it and it's in the freezer now <laughs> But uh, the time will come in a month or so when I, I can just take it out, defrost that, cut, the, cut it right open, and we can have chicken all night long. Not a big deal. All right, so what have we learned? Gasoline, generator, a pack of cards. Hello, fresh. <laughs> uh, ice to keep your food cold. And at the wintertime, it's, it's a lot easier for that. You just throw it outside in a cooler. Not that big a deal. So that's what I learned during our recent cold snap. I hope you were able to take something away from uh, my mistakes. And I hope you learned something from my mistakes. Gasoline. Seriously, man, when you're waiting in line for 30 minutes in your car, you're just like, dude, it's like 1973 out there. And I remember the old energy crisis. I'm old enough to remember looking for gasoline. So don't make my mistake. Keep, uh, keep at least 40 gallons along with your generator. Keep it handy. Um, you're going to need that when the power goes out. I mean, eight days, that's the most I've ever personally experienced a power outage. Before this, it was three and a half. Uh, usually they're pretty quick. The people in Salem, Oregon, no joke, uh, over 20 days without power. They had over 20 days without electricity. And you can't imagine keeping the food fresh that long. Uh, the average person's not going to come up with a way to keep their food that fresh. You can only eat out so many times before it gets too damned expensive. And it's cold out at night. It's still pushing 30 degrees at night around here. So you know it gets pretty chilly. Even uh, today, uh, in this day and age, I turn the heat on twice in the evening time just to take the chill out of the rooms. But um, there's nothing like it was. Nothing like it was when you don't have electricity. It just gets colder and colder and colder. And you really feel it. <sighs> anyway, that's that. I hope you learned a few things. I hope I was able to, to give you some advice that's uh, useful. So thank you very much for joining us. And I look forward to seeing you next time.